In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. Okay, <clears throat> so we are on uh, volume 24, uh, September, excuse me, volume 24, uh, July 10th, 1928. <clears throat> My daughter Louisa, when the divine will dominates on earth, let's see, this, this is what's coming. When, when my divine will dominates on earth, then we'll, there will be a perfect union between heaven and earth. One will be the order, one will be the harmony, one will be the echo, one will be the life. Because one will be the will. Even more as though uh, many mirrors will be seen in heaven and souls reflecting themselves in them We'll look at what the blessed in heaven are doing. So I remember one of the first things that I read was, look to the heavens as if in a mirror and see God. Now think about that. That's, that's what the divine will is. Look to the heavens as if in a mirror and see God. So that's what, we, we, God wants us to be in his image and likeness. And it's the same thing here. Uh, even though, as though many mirrors will be seen in heaven and souls reflecting themselves in these mirrors will look at what the heaven, the, what the saints are doing in heaven. This is, divini these, this is divinization. This is what St. Peter talks about in, in, in his epistle. They will hear their chant, their celestial melodies, and by imitating what they do, the saints do, their chants, their melodies, they will be the they will be the life of heaven in the midst of souls on earth. So here uh, we have to understand we can't limit what God is going to do. God is going to do something that is indescribable. Louisa is is telling a divine reality in human terms. This is far beyond what we're reading. Again, from black and white and, and uh, two-dimensional she's given us three-dimensional and in technicolor and then, see the more that you meditate on this the the more God was going to open your eyes to a divine reality my fiat will place everything in common there will be the true life of the via voluntastua on earth as it is in heaven then will my divine will sing, sing victory and the creature Louisa will sing the hymn of its triumph uh, volume 24, uh, August 12th, 1928. Now, Louisa, the one who lives in thy divine will, rises back into the act of Adam, innocent. Okay, so uh, what's happening here is God is showing us basically 
where Adam was before the fall. And making the universal life and virtue her own, Louisa makes Adam's acts, Adam's act her own. Not only this, but Louisa rises back into the acts of Mary, the Queen of Heaven, and those of her very Creator, and flows in all the acts that Louisa centralizes herself in them. And then she says, and again, this is italicized so that we this could, could become our prayer, everything is mine. When we enter into the divine will, everything is mine. I, Louisa, give everything back to God. Everything is mine. I breathe it in, and now I breathe it back to God. It's, it's, again, it's competing with God. Just as his divine will is mine, so everything is mine. Everything that has come out of the divine will, having nothing of my own, with its fiat, the divine will's fiat, I, Louisa, and we can put our own name there, I have everything. And I, with Louisa, can give God back to God. I can give divinity back to divinity. Oh, how happy. Oh, how glorious. Oh, how victorious I, Louisa, feel in the external, eternal volition. I, Louisa, possess everything. And I, Louisa, can give everything without exhausting anything of my immense riches. To see what, see what God wants, God wants souls to so possess this gift that they are like God. Everything, everything is God's. It's not ours. But in the divine will, everything then becomes ours. It's the, it's the drop of water put into the chalice filled with wine. That drop of water is nothing. It goes into that wine and fuses and diffuses and becomes wine. We share in divinity. We are the drop of nothing into the ocean of the divine will. That drop of nothing into that ocean becomes the ocean. Everything in the ocean is ours. Why? Because we are, part, we, we are now one with the ocean. It's the same thing here. Once we enter into this divine will with Louisa, everything is ours. You can say to the wind, stop. And it has to stop. Jesus says, if you had this much faith, you could say to that mountain, move, and it has to move. When he said to Peter, will you walk on the water? Come on, sh show me what you can do. Walk on the water. No human can walk on water. When he said to Philip, you feed the 5,000. A, a human can't feed 5,000. But God wants this. He wants us to share in his divinity. Don't limit God. Well, what's, going, what's coming is, is so spectacular that the little miracles that we have read about and seen and heard about is now going to be, uh, we're going to see the great miracle of the divine will. We're going to enter into this gift, one with Louisa, heaven on earth. See, there's, don't limit God. Don't say, well, well God's not going to do that. Well, God says, fine, then I can't do it. You limit me. You have faith this much in me, and you can say to that mountain, move, and it has to move. You could say to the sycamore, be uprooted and cast to the sea, and it has to go there. That's what God wants from us. Do we believe in him? Do we trust in him? Do we have confidence in him? See, this is what's going to happen when, when uh, the church says, let's see some miracles from Louisa. God's going to go, you want to see miracles? Watch. See, St. Padre Pio said the world and the church will focus on Luisa Picaretta uh, and the divine will in the third millennium. He says Luisa is a second son that will give light to, to the world and to the church. Again, the, the sun sets at 6 p.m. Luisa rises in the east. There's no more darkness with Luisa. Why? She possesses the true life of Jesus, who is the light of the world. The true life of Mary, the woman clothed with the sun. This is what she possesses. She's the newborn of the new Adam and of the new Eve. Who is this Louisa Picaretta? Who is she? This is what the church is doing. And I told you, uh, the church is astonished by Louisa. They, they, the, some, of the, some of the people have just put the brakes on and going, what do we do now? 
I mean, it's a whole new beginning for Christ and his church. It's a whole new beginning for the world. Wait, wait till you see what God's got planned. It's, this is, I can only see a glimpse of it. The, the, the door to the kingdom has not been opened. All we're seeing is the little ray of light underneath the bottom of the door. Just a little ray of light. When the Pope receives the key, which is Louisa, he opens the door. The door is opened. The kingdom of God is opened. Everyone will be invited in. Wait, what's coming? We don't know what's behind that door. It's, it's an infinite mystery. Yet God is going to let us share in that mystery. That's why we were created, to participate with everything in God. Soon, that door is going to be opened. Uh, again, it's uh, with Louisa in the Vatican, all that the Pope has to say is she's venerable. Duck, because it's, great things are coming. Great things are coming. This is going to, it's going to, it, the whole world is going to shake when Louisa is known. The Muslims, the Buddhists, the, the Hindus, the Jews are all going to convert to Catholicism. They're going to say, the Muslims are going to say, Muhammad who? I want Jesus Christ as my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my King, my God, my all. I want Mary to be my mother and queen. The Hindus, the Buddhists, the Jew, everyone is going to say, I want this universal life. I want this Catholic life. I, I, again, it, we're very, very close to this. And, and that's why there, there's really no time. There's no time for sports. There's, there's no time for um, uh, music. I mean, contemporary music. It's let's get into singing for the glory of God. There's, there's no time um, to be part of the world anymore. There's no time for this. Our job is to begin to live the life of Jesus, to live the life of Mary, which is now found in Louisa. Volume 25, November 10th, 1928. My daughter Louisa, living in my divine will, praying in the divine will, is to transport heaven to earth and earth to heaven. Therefore, it is our triune God's true and total triumph, our divine victory, our divine conquest. So be faithful and attentive to me. What she says to us is be faithful and attentive in reading. Don't put, don't put this on the shelf anymore. You know, have this in your hands. Read it. Study. And if you like, if you would want, if you have a Kindle or uh, an iPad, you can have all the writings there. And the wonderful thing about that is, is even if you're tired, it will read to you. You know, so it don't 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 limit God. Don't don't let uh, dive into this ocean, uh, drown in this ocean of the divine will. Five twenty-five, uh, April. Excuse me, March thirty-first, nineteen twenty-nine. I, Louisa, feel within, within me the continuous power of the divine fiat that envelops me with such an empire as to give no time to my dying will to do the slightest act. And the divine will glories in not letting it die completely because if the divine will did so, the, the, the divine will would lose the, its prestige of operating over a, over, a, over a human will that... While the human will is alive, voluntarily receiving the vital act of the divine fiat upon itself, and it, the human will is content in living while dying, so as to give life and absolute dominion to the supreme volition that, victorious with its divine rights, extending its boundaries and sings victory over the dying human will of the creature, so that, though dying, uh, smiles and feels happy and honored that the divine will has its field of action within the soul. So that means very clearly that God doesn't want to destroy the human will. God wants the human will to allow the divine will to reign in it. And, and so therefore, he doesn't want to kill it, uh, but he wants it to be surrendered to it so that it can be honored that the divine will has its place of action within the soul. 
527, um, October 2nd, 1929. With Louisa, the one who lives in the divine will, completely in the divine will, its love is so great as to transform the actions of Louisa. And an exchange of life takes place between God and Louisa. An exchange of actions, of steps and heartbeats. So, again, breathing in and breathing out. God breathes into the soul. The soul breathes out. This is the exchange of actions. The blood pumps into the heart. The blood pumps out of the heart. The, the I love you comes in and the I love you goes out. I, God says to us, I love you. And we say to God, I love you. I love you. I love you. And this is all day long, this, this, this prayer. God remains classed to the creature, Louisa, and Louisa classed to God. And they become inseparable beings. In this exchange of action and of life, the game is formed between God and, and soul, Louisa. One makes herself, uh, oneself pray to the other. And in this becomes pray, this becomes praying, becoming pray to each other. They plan in the divine manner. They play in the divine manner. They make each other happy. They make feast. And God and the soul, Louisa, sing glory. They feel victorious because no one has lost, but one has conquered the other. In fact, my divine will, no one loses. L loses uh, do not exist in the divine will. Only of Louisa, the one who lives in the divine will, can I, Jesus, say that Louisa is my amusement and creation. And I, God, feel victorious and lowering myself to let myself be conquered by Louisa. Because I, Jesus, know for sure that Louisa will not be opposed to letting herself be conquered by me. So God wants, God wants to win. And by God winning, we win. And Louisa is the only one who has done this next to the Blessed Mother. She's the mother and queen. But now the newborn, the first human, is allow allowing this. I mean, human without original, a uh, human with original sin. Our Lady was human with immaculate conception. Uh, she, she didn't have original sin. When I say the only human, Louisa uh, has the original sin. And, and therefore, now God is letting this human with original sin live, I mean, free of it now, living fully in the divine will. Therefore, let the flight of the my most holy divine will be always continuous. Volume 27, uh, October 7th, 1929. Now, my daughter Louisa, your living in my divine fiat began with our asking for your human will that you, Louisa, most willingly gave me Jesus. And when I, Jesus, saw you give me your human will, I, Jesus, felt victorious in breathing into you, Louisa. See, to see this? We surrender our human will so that God can breathe in us again as, as God breathed into Adam. And I, Jesus, wanted to pronounce my omnipotent fiat in the death of your soul to renew the act of creation as, as he did with Adam. And, and so Louisa begins again the second generation of the children of light. In this fiat, I, Jesus, repeat always in order to give you, Louisa, continuous life from the divine will. As the, the fiat is repeated, it preserves you, Louisa, and it maintains its life in you, Louisa. This is why you, Louisa, often feel me breathe into you, renewing your soul. And the inseparability I, Jesus, feel in my divine will that makes me love with perennial love what we, Triune God, have deposited in you, Louisa. So again, God wants to start over again. Where, where Adam failed, God now wants to begin a, 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 a second generation of the children of light. That's us, if we allow God to do this. If we link ourselves to Louisa. Every time my fiat is repeated, each of its truths that I manifest to you, Louisa, each of its knowledges or words that the divine will speaks to you, Louisa, is a love that arises within us, triune God, to love you, Louisa, more and to make itself be loved again, uh, which Adam stopped doing. It is, our triune, it is our triune God creating and preserving fiat that loving its life and what the divine will has done in you, Louisa, keeps pronouncing itself in order to preserve its life and the beauty of its works. Therefore, Louisa, be attentive to receive the continuous word of my divine fiat. For the divine fiat is bearer of creation, a bearer of life and of preserva uh, pres preservation. Thank you. So here we have, we have Jesus saying, it's the fiat. He wants us to enter into the fiat. And that's what we're supposed to do. If something's bothering us, say fiat. Enter into the fiat as you're entering into a room, as you're entering into the chapel, as you're entering into a church. 
fiat. Okay? Something's bothering you. Something's worrying you. Something's making you anxious. Fiat. Enter into the divine fiat. Don't um, uh, be oppressed any anymore with anything or anyone. Divine 27, February 17, 1930. My divine will restricts itself to enclose itself in Louisa while remaining immense and victorious. The divine will forms its kingdom in Louisa, making use of Louisa as if Louisa were its body in which the divine will palpitates, breathes, speaks, operates, and walks. So we become the skin of the divine will. The divine will reigns in us. We say, come, gaze in my gazing, hear in my hearing, walk in my walking. Come, divine will, come reign in me. So what happens is we're the skin. Everything else is, becomes the divine will. When people look at us, they go, oh, there's so-and-so. But it's the divine will that's reigning. We're not reigning anymore. Why are you so peaceful? Why are you so happy? Why are you... It's the divine will, fiat. Nothing bothers me. The fiat is reigning in me. You know, the next thing is, well, you got to go see a doctor. It's, it's see, we, 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 are all, we are on earth, but we're not of earth. We're of heaven. You see how, see how this is going to change everything? No more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity. Even though we're suffering physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, everything is fiat. Everything is fiat. Uh, again, what the Lord is asking of us is, is to really let him be victorious. Okay, so it says, where did we end here? Um, Okay. Therefore, the sorrow of my divine fiat, because souls do not lend themselves to let the divine will carry out all of its operations in them. This is God's sorrow. To let the divine will reign. They don't let it. Then they force the divine will to silence and inactivity, to incomprehensibility. With the divine and unspeakable patience, the divine will waits for those who must, this is important, those who must live in its divine will. That's us. We must let God reign. This is, this is, God isn't saying try to do it. He's saying you must do this. Uh, again, it's not for your neighbors. It's not for your coworkers. It's not for your parishioners. And unfortunately, it's not for most of your family. It's for you. You must let God do this so that the kingdom can be established. Why, who must let the divine will live in its will so as to resume its speaking, its divine activity, to form its kingdom in the midst of your family, in the midst of your neighbors, in the midst of your co-workers, in the midst of your parishioners. This is where the divine will reigns, in you on earth, in the midst of human creatures. Therefore, be attentive, and he says this to us, be attentive in reading, my daughter Louisa, listen to the speaking of my divine fiat. And for us, read what Jesus has written. These are his words. Give the divine will life in all your acts. And you, Louisa, will see the unexpected portents that my most holy divine will will do in you, Louisa, and in us if we allow him. Watch what God is going to do. Don't limit God. Let God have his way with you. 529, um, uh, September, September 10th, 1931. August, thank you. After a while, your mind just goes, becomes mush. Okay. My abandon and the divine volition continues. I, Louisa, feel it's enrapturing force, force sweetly imposing itself on me, but without forcing me. See, it's, God doesn't twist our arms. As you read, you're just enraptured by what you're reading. But then God says, what do you want to do now? Okay, you can go back to reading. You can rest. You can close your eyes. You know, you can go out and smoke some cigarettes. What, I mean, whatever you want. Have a beer. I mean, whatever you want. But Jesus keeps on saying, what do you want? What do you want? And when we say to the Lord, I want nothing but you. I want your divine will to reign in me. He goes, okay, let me show me how you're going to do this. And that's when we, we go back. 
uh, abandoning ourselves to the divine will and being enraptured by a, a force sweetly imposing itself on us but without forcing us. So again, it, it has to become your life. You know, um, as we give up everything, God says, I want to fill your void with me. So what we give up, say for example, it's chocolate. You give up chocolate. What am I going to do now? I can't eat chocolate. Well, start feeding on this first bread. And what happens is you not only become uh, uh, enamored by this bread, but you want it more than you'd ever want chocolate ever again. Yeah, I mean, it's God, God is, is taking control without forcing us. Because the divine will does not like things that are forced. If they are not for the divine will, they are things that do not belong to the divine will. Therefore, the divine will is all eyes so that all my acts may receive the life of the divine will and become as if they were its own acts, divine acts. And it seems to me that each of my acts done in its uh, adorable divine will is a victory that the divine will win wins over the littleness of my human will. Volume 30, uh, November 4th, 1931. My little daughter, Louisa. The more you, Louisa, remain abandoned in me, Jesus, the more you, Louisa, will feel my divine life in you, Louisa. And I, Jesus, will take the pri place of primary life in your soul. You see what God wants to do? He doesn't want you to worry anymore. He's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of your family. He's going to take care of everything, your health, your wealth, your, your, uh, your spirit, your soul. He's going to take care of everything. Abandon ourselves in Jesus. You will feel the divine life in you. And I, Jesus, will take the primary place, primary life in your soul. See, do you see what God wants? He, he, he knows what we're going through. That's why when you read the first appeal... Jesus says, I'm tired of the way you're living. And since you haven't come to me, I'm going to come to you. And I'm going to wage a war against you. But it's not a war of blood. It's a war of love. And you will not be able to turn me away again. That's Jesus' promise. So all we have to do, if we have, the sooner that's going to take place, is the sooner we say fiat. Let it be done as you say. Know that true confidence in me, Jesus, forms the arms of the soul and the feet in order to climb on Jesus' lap and clasp Jesus so tightly that I, God, cannot unbind myself from the soul, from Louisa, and the soul's link to Louisa. So one who has no confidence has no arms. One who has no confidence has no feet. One who has no confidence in me is a poor cripple. See, that's why Jesus, that's why Jesus, I trust in you is so important today. Jesus, I trust in you. I believe in you. I hope in you. I have confidence in you. You, you cling to Jesus. Therefore, your confidence, Louisa, will be your victory over me. And I, Jesus, will hold you tightly in my arms, attached to my breast, to give you, Louisa, the continuous milk of my most holy divine will. God wants to feed us with divinity. Volume 30, January 17, 1932. Blessed daughter Louisa, courage. Do not afflict yourself too much, for now I, Jesus, want your heaven to be my most holy divine will. God wants our heaven to be the divine will on earth. That's why when you read the divine will, you're so peaceful. Why? You're, you're in heaven. And, and, and what happens is uh, uh, the more we read, the more joy, peaceful, joyful, and happy we become. The divine will will be for you, Louisa, the celestial fatherland on earth. The divine will will not fail to make you, Louisa, happy. To give you, Louisa, the pure joys from up there now on earth. Wherever the divine will reigns, it it has many manifold ways to give always new surprise, new divine surprises of joy, new divine surprises of contentment, so that the soul who possesses the divine will may enjoy her paradise on earth 
Therefore, now the divine will takes on the dominating mode. It's dominating. Uh, dominion extends in the mind, in the word, in the heart, and in the whole being of the soul, even in the littlest motion. And oh, how sweet is its divine will dominion. The divine will is dominion and life. The divine will is dominion and strength. The divine will is dominion and light. And it, it makes its way and its divine will's light dispels all the darkness, removes all the bars that prevents good. And the divine will's dominion puts the enemies to flight. Do you see why it's not just... It's not just... Like people talk about divine mercy. I, I, let's have divine mercy. Okay, we, we enter into the divine mercy. The divine will is dominion. It's reigning. It's, it's, it's changing the life. It's, it's, uh, what God said to St. Faustina about divine mercy uh, uh, makes the... I mean, it's, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what God tells Louisa about divine will. You know, it's somebody said, well, it's the next stage of divine mercy, then divine will. No, divine will is eternal life, abundant life. It's, it's, it's to enter into the kingdom of God. We have to know God's mercy, but God wants us now to enter into divine life on earth without dying. To have heaven on earth without dying. In some, the creature feels carried by the dominion of the divine will, and while she is do dominated, she becomes dominator of herself. You see, there's no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more sin, no more death. The dominator of her acts and of the very divine will that is such that while the divine will dominates and rules, the divine will's gentleness, the divine will's strength, the divine will's sweetnesses are so great that it identifies itself with the soul and wants the soul to dominate alongside it because the divine will's dominion is peaceful and to each of its acts that the creature does in the divine will gives its kiss of dominating peace. This divine kiss, this divine gentleness, this divine sweetness enraptures the human will in the divine and they extend the dominion together to form the divine kingdom in the depth of the soul. There is nothing more beautiful. There is nothing more dear. There is nothing greater. There is nothing holier than to feel the domination, the dominion of my divine will flow in each one of your acts and in the whole entirety of, in the, whole entirety of the soul. I, Jesus, could say that heaven remains behind in the face of the dominion of my divine will, in the heart of the pilgrim creature. In fact, the saints, uh, in, uh, the saints in the divine will uh, it has nothing added. There is nothing left but to delight them continuously while in the pilgrim soul there are works that the divine will can do. New divine life in the divine will, can infuse new divine conquests in the divine will, can obtain new uh, to expand and extend more its dominion. The total dominion of my divine will in the soul is our continued victory for each of its uh, divine will's acts, which the divine will does in Louisa, with its divine will uh, dominion, so many victories do we try and God obtain and the soul becomes the winner of our divine will in her acts. On the, on the other hand, in heaven, we have nothing to win because everything is ours. Each blessed, each of the saints, completes his work in the act uh, of breathing his last on earth. So, the blessed complete their work on earth. Okay? They, in heaven, they, they don't have to do anything anymore. Therefore, our conquering work is on earth in the pilgrim souls, not in the souls in heaven. They're conquered. They're done. So when we're on earth, the more that we <coughs> breathe in the divine will, the more that we uh, love in the divine will, the more that we act in the divine will, the more we have for all eternity. In heaven, we, neither, we have neither anything to lose nor anything to acquire. So only on earth can we do this. After you die, you're not going to do any more divine acts. You can't. It's done. 
So this is why it, we, we can't waste a moment. We can't waste a moment. We've got to do everything in the divine will. This is what God is asking of us. Nothing uh, enters, uh, excuse me, volume 30, uh, June 17th, 1930. Nothing enters into our acts if it is not a birth from the divine will. Okay, so God wants a, 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 a new birth. For that When he said be fruitful and multiply, it was not just children. But every thought, every word, every deed is a new birth uh, that God wants, a divine life. See then where the sanctity of Louisa, who lives in our divine will, is formed. It is in the middle of our divine sanctity. Louisa loves in the center of our divine love. Louisa operates in the midst of our divine works. So Louisa, the one who operates in our divine will, will feel as though in, in her nature the inseparability. Louisa from our divine acts and we try on God form Louisa's own acts just as light is inseparable from heat and heat from light. Therefore, they are our continuous triumph, our glory, our victory over the human will. They are our divine property so that we try on God form in Louisa and Louisa forms in us. See, it's, it's competition. God is God Almighty, holy, holy Lord God of Sabbath oath, but he breathes into Louisa his life. Why? So Louisa can breathe out God's life. It's competition. God breathes in, Louisa has divine life, breathes it out, gives it back to God. God breathes in, Louisa breathes in, Louisa breathes divine life out. It's competition. Louisa can't do this on her own. It's, it comes from God. That's why he says, therefore, they are our continuous triumph, our glory, our victory over the human will. The human will can't do this. They are our divine properties, and we try on God form in Louisa, and Louisa forms in us. The human volition and the divine volition kiss each other continuously. They fuse together, and God carries out his life in Louisa, and Louisa carries out her life in God. So again, this is not romantic. It is the father kissing the daughter, the daughter kissing the father. It's... it's it's the, the love of the little newborn and, and the God of creation. This is, what God, this is what God wants. He wants everything back in order. And see, Adam said, I will not obey. He followed the command, uh, the, the, the line of Lucifer. I will not obey. I will not, I will not surrender. I will not follow. So our job is to say, I, I want to be faithful and obedient. That's why it's so important to be a faithful and obedient Catholic. Faithful and obedient to Christ and his church. Faithful and obedient to the vicar of Christ on earth. That's our job. And if we can't be faithful and obedient, God can't give us this gift. Because we fall right into the same trap that Adam did. Not being faithful, not being obedient. So the Lord is, is asking us, he wants to be victorious in us. He wants to reign in us. So volume 31, volume 31, um, August 14th, 1932. I, Louise, who was thinking about the divine will and how one who lets herself be dominated by the divine will, giving it full dominion. All rights are hers and everything that others obtain through pity, through mercy, through the goodness of God, Louisa obtains by divine right. She has, it's just it's her. She is she is royalty. She is the daughter of the king. She's the daughter of the queen. It's hers by right. By right she obtains divine sanctity because what dominates her is holy and has the virtue of transforming soul and body into divine sanctity, into divine goodness, into divine love. So all victories, conquests, rights are Louisa's. And as owner, Louisa takes heaven by storm. See, this is, you see why there's going to be many miracles? Louisa is going to do this by storm. Anything you pray to Louisa is going to happen. And, and we've got to begin to do that now. Why? She possesses the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. It's not just a virtue like the saints of Jesus or the virtue of the saints like Mary. It's the true life. That's why we go to Louisa, because we're going to go through Louisa to Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. 
So all victories, conquests, rights are hers. As owner, she takes heaven by storm. What a great difference between the one who lives in the divine will and one who lives by human will. See, the saints were, did something holy in the human will. It wasn't holy in the divine will. So this is why Jesus calls the divine will the sanctity of sanctities. My daughter Louisa, as long as my divine will is not held as one's own life, exclusively hers, that no one can take away from her, even though she knows that the divine will is a gift received from God, even though she is already fortunate and victorious to have possession of the divine will, the soul can never love as befits the divine will, nor feel the need of its life. So that's that's basically where, where we are. We don't possess it yet. We want to possess it. But we got to prove to Jesus that we want this more than anything. Nor will the divine will be able to fully develop with all its liberty, its divine life in the soul. Therefore, calling the divine will disposes you, Louisa. Calling the divine will. Come, divine will, come breathe in my breathing. Come, divine will, come beat in my heart beating. Come, divine will, come walk in my walking. It's See, it's a life of, of one with God. It's a life one with God. Always calling about the divine will. Always bringing that fire from heaven down. She, Jesus says, uh, therefore, calling the divine will disposes you, Louisa, and making the divine will yours, uh, the divine will will make itself known, and you, Louisa, will feel the great good of possessing the divine will life, this life. And you, Louisa, will love the divine will uh, as the divine will merits to be loved, and you will be jealous to guard the divine will with such attention as to not lose even one breath of the divine will. Isn't that great? Okay, volume 33, February 10th, 1934. My little daughter, Louisa, you must know. Again, this is a command from Jesus. You must know this. You must know this. That my supreme volition looks at Louisa, looks at Louisa as one who wants to live in the divine will. Uh, as its birth. Louis, it looks at Louisa as its birth. Louisa wants to grow in its divine will, grow in the arms of the divine will, maternal cares, and the divine will, seeing that its tiny little one, Louisa, the newborn, wants to give of herself and her little works in order to tell the divine will that she loves the divine will. This divine mother then clasps Louisa to its bosom and fortifies it with divine strength, the motion, the word, the steps of its daughter. The strength invests everything. It transforms Louisa, although Louisa is little. Louisa sees herself little and strong, little and victor. And this mother of the divine will takes enjoyment in letting itself be conquered by its new little daughter, Louisa Picaretta. In fact, this creature, Louisa, seeing herself strong in the love of God, strong in the sufferings of God, strong in the operating of God. Strengthen, strength is the halo of this soul, creature, Louisa strength again this is the firmness that we talked about earlier Louisa is the invincible one before God and over herself her weaknesses her passions tremble before this little victor God himself smiles and changes justice divine justice into divine love into divine forgiveness for the infant uh, infantile strength of Louisa it is the strength of her mother her perennial care that renders Louisa strong and invincible, the strength of the divine will. Therefore, if you, Louisa, want to be victor over everything, grow in the arms of my divine will. The divine will will pour itself out in you, Louisa, and you, Louisa, will feel its palpitating life in you. The divine will will raise you in its divine likeness. And you, Louisa, will be its honor. You, Louisa, will be its triumph. And you, Louisa, will be its glory. Can you imagine God saying that to a human? I can see him saying that to the Blessed Mother. She's the mother of God. But God is saying this to a human born of original sin. That's why God loves her so much. He has crushed her and brought her back to life. This is, this is Louisa Figueroa. So we'll end there in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, 
I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.